the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is God's expression of Himself through you. The secret place is a place where God truly is. Well, welcome to tonight's broadcast here in the secret place. You know, this is a place where God truly is. I am so glad that you would join me tonight just for a moment where we discuss the Word of God together, where we are going to talk about the meat of the Word. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 5. You know, there's a lot of people um, talk about the milk and the meat of the Word, but tonight I want to minister the word, the meat of the word to you. Hallelujah. Um, I'm so blessed that this is the day the Lord has made. Remember, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I believe there will be some things come up in tonight's broadcast that will help you and be a blessing to your spiritual life, your walk with the Lord. Um, but I want to talk about the gifts of the Spirit along with the meat and the milk, meat versus the milk of the word. I want to discuss the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts specifically mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you're watching with me, I ask that you would comment, leave a uh, who you are, where you're watching from below. We have an exciting time of teaching. It will be short. It will be to the point. I'm going to be discussing the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but until then, I want to quickly play a short clip from a service that we had uh, a couple months back. Uh, don't actually remember exactly when it was, but this was a clip where God's power was moving and there were people being healed all over the revival meeting and healing is for today. Miracles are for today. So just watch this quick clip, and then I'll be back with you, and we're going to discuss the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to get them to function in your everyday life outside of Sunday and Wednesday, and the difference between the meat and the milk of the Word. Yeah. Just God. Just, just God. Do you believe He's done it? Yes. Do you believe? Me, yes. Say, Lord, I receive. My healing, now. my healing now in Jesus name sister Jesus it's, done. Name. it's done it's done it's done it's done it's time <laughs> take his sister my support by hallelujah set your hands this way God is touching the sick hallelujah no more she gonna take that machine off brother Kurt pick her up please hallelujah now sister I want you to take a step of faith hallelujah now, I want you to pull your oxygen mask off. You don't need it. You don't need it. Now, somebody take this from her. Come on. Say, Jesus yeah. is my healer. He's my healer. How is <laughs> it? Is. Oh, yeah, just take this. <sighs> you to take us I want you to walk and, and and just take a big breath of fresh air hallelujah why am I having her walk because I want to I want you to see what God has done the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you and what you see is so real it's so miraculous come here my sister give her a big God bless you how is it I think it's much better no 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 Say, I know it's better I know it's better hallelujah Glory! Now, can you can you get on your machine and tell yourself? Does it show you a percentage like ninety five percent, eighty percent? No, it doesn't. Well, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you tonight. 
you better praise the Lord because you'll never need it again. And I got word for you. That fear of death and dying is over. God loves you and he wants you to live a long life. So go and tell everyone about Jesus and what he's done. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it. How great. Stand to your feet as our God. Sing with me how great is our God. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that clip. Uh, just from several months ago, um, you know, there is no excitement. There is no joy like watching someone come in contact with the supernatural. You know, God's word said he sent his word and he healed them of their diseases. And that's Psalm 107, 20. It is so important for the church to remember in the gifts of the Spirit, to remember their importance, their place in the body. You know, there's nothing that it thrills my soul more than to minister one-on-one -on -one with God's people, to see them that were in bondage, that were wearing braces and breathing machines and with cancers and all manner of sickness and disease, to see them miraculously and marvelously set free by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. There is no greater force in the universe. Amen. It, I want you to... Um, Quickly, go to Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, you know, this lady was on an oxygen machine. She said it was difficult for her to go to and fro. And even to get out of her car would wind her and would tire her lungs out. But God's power healed and set her free. And you know, when God heals somebody, He does not just heal them in their body. But I have found that He heals them spirit soul and body. So sometimes, you know, there are diseases that are caused because of emotional trauma, because of things that happen spiritually. You know, the Bible says bitterness dries the bones. Someone who um, is bitter or walks in unforgiveness, a lot of times you will hear of them getting cancer and disease, leukemia, and such like diseases. But the Bible says that Jesus sets free completely. You know, John says, he whom the Son sets free, John 8, 36, I believe, is free indeed. That means spirit, soul, and body. So when God touches your life, he doesn't leave half of it undone and heal the other part. He heals you and sets you and I free completely. Amen. Shout hallelujah. And so these are important things to know about the gifts of the Spirit. You will have observed in the clip that most of the time, when a gift of the Spirit is, on, is operating, it will function together with another gift. Uh, many times the gifts of healing are paired together with the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge. What you could not see before is that the Lord had moved upon me in a word of knowledge that somebody needed healing in their lungs, emphysema. And this dear lady came forward to receive her touch from Jesus. You see, a word of knowledge will spur or will increase the person's faith because the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God will give you a word for somebody else. Then in return, that will increase their faith to the, faith to the measure where they'll come forward and receive a physical manifestation for what they've been believing for. These are very important things to know as you begin to flow and to function with the Holy Spirit and fulfill the call that He has on your life. Um, watching that clip, you would also observe that there was a word of knowledge after the gifts of healings had functioned to encourage her spiritually. This is a great learning experience for us all. Um, never, hardly ever, that God has ever used me in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit have I only functioned in one. Most of the time, I'm talking 90% of the time, when I have a tongue, I will have an interpretation of that tongue, which equals together tongue and interpretation equals the gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. God, when he does something, he does it.
big. He does it real. He does it miraculously. And so everything God does is perfect because he's a perfect God. Amen. Who's watching us today? If you are watching it with us, just leave your name, a uh, comment below so that we can know and communicate together. I love communication. And so just want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. And of course, if you're a part of our church and our ministry here in Tulsa, um, you're joining with us. Just thank God for you. Thank you for your love and support of this ministry. Are you being blessed tonight by what you're hearing? I pray so. And so we showed a quick clip, um, if you're just coming on, of the gift of healing and operation. Someone who was healed of emphysema, chronic disease. And so if you're catching this video after our broadcast goes off air, you can actually visit our YouTube page. And of course, we'll leave that up where you can see that live service. But amen. How many are blessed? How many are thankful for the gifts of the Spirit in operation? Hallelujah. Well, I want to talk about quickly meat versus milk. Meat versus milk. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5. And I believe that the end of this thing is coming. Hallelujah. This plague, this pandemic that has plagued our world. Today, I believe this is a sign of the times that we are living in. Nothing to be worried about, frightened about. We know the one that created heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And with that knowledge, armed with that knowledge, it is impossible to live a life of fear. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 5, and I'm talking about the milk versus the meat of the word. How many out there desire the sincere meat of the word of God? Amen. You desire to go deeper, farther, higher in your walk with the Lord. Well, my desire tonight is that I would speak something by the Holy Spirit's help that will help you propel you into a place of further spiritual maturity. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. And we'll do our best to answer any questions you may have. Um, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, uh, start at verse 11. Paul says, of whom we have many things to say. Paul was talking about the apostles and the church. We have many things to say and are hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. You know, I've pastored many years now, and what's interesting to me is a pastor or a minister, whatever capacity or office that they stand in, evangelist, apostle, teacher, can only go as far as the people. I'll say that again, minister of the gospel, you can only go as far as the person you're ministering to. Jesus could only do few mighty works in his hometown because of the unbelief of the people. You know, the Bible really says Jesus could do no mighty works. So excuse me, he, he, the Bible says he saved, he healed a sickly few. So number one, while you're learning to flow and operate in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and by the way, there are more gifts than just the nine, but those are the nine main gifts uh, you can only go as far as the person you're ministering to. Hallelujah. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. This is Hebrews 5.12, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You say, Pastor Chris, what does this mean? I thought milk was good. Milk is good. You know, my brother and his wife just had a baby, and that baby is, I believe, four or five months old right now. Forgive me, Justin Lauren, if you're watching. But this baby cannot eat steak. This baby would choke and die if she were given a sirloin steak or a big platter of beef ribs. But uh, my little uh, niece, Hazel Grace, who's four, four, I believe she's four months old, is 
living off of breast milk. Milk. Amen. Milk is good. I like to have a good glass of milk sometimes, but I cannot live off of milk alone. You know, I didn't have milk for lunch uh, this evening or dinner. Milk only lasts in your system for so long. What Paul is saying here, he said, because the people have become dull of hearing, dull of teaching, dull of the word, dull of preaching, he said, for when this time you ought to be teachers yourselves. There are so many people who have served God for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Unset under the finest teaching heaven had to offer. Yet they're no different than when they first believed. Why is that? I'll tell you why. It's what you do with what you've been given that determines what you have. I say, it's what you do with the word that you've been given. Amen. James said, faith without works is dead being alone. If we've ever lived in a generation where people, men and women, have a, 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 a buffet of the finest teaching heaven has to offer, it is now. But I want to encourage you that God wants to take you from a place of desiring milk and to a place where you can understand, where you can chew for a while on the deep truths of God's Word. You know, there are many different levels of teaching. Uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin always said this. He said he taught 70% of what he knew because the people weren't ready. I believe it was 70% of the people weren't ready to hear what God had shown him through revelation. You know, there are, just as there are realms in life, different dimensions, there are different dimensions in God. Just as all of you watching are of different age, so there is a spiritual age each one of you are at, including myself. And depending on how old you are, determines what kind of spiritual food that you can eat. Amen? Milk can be instantly taken and absorbed into the body and produce instant results. There's a lot of baby Christians, they desire the sincere milk of the word, which is not wrong, but the reason being is because they cannot chew and have not developed bodily, spiritually, enough to be able to digest, metabolize hard meat or protein. Amen? Everything in life is parallel. Truth is parallel. Paul said you can compare spiritual things with carnal things. Many things in this natural world coincide with spiritual things. Amen? I wouldn't want to run a marathon on milk. I wouldn't be able to do very much if I had a steady diet as a 31-year-old adult if all I had was milk. And man, it is God's desire for you to enjoy the milk but to live off of the meat. Amen. I like to go back and, and read the simple things of the gospel and, and talk about the milk of the word. Amen. Uh, I like to ponder the mercy and the grace of God, which is inexhaustible. But at the same time, I like to study the book of Revelation and, t and, and look at types and shadows of Christ throughout Genesis to Revelation. Amen. To find that scarlet thread which runs through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But a new Christian many times pick up the Old Testament and they say, I don't understand this. I, I, I can't get a hold of what God's trying to tell me. That comes with spiritual maturity, my friend. So if that's you, do not become discouraged. Don't become discouraged. But remember and, and put this in your mind and get it in your heart. That God wants to bring you to a new place. He wants to take you from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Not keeping you in a state of immaturity. God wants you to grow in the things of His Word. Grow in His Spirit and increase in the knowledge of Christ. And He'll equip you with greater tools. Amen? Hallelujah. Another thing to remember is meat is chewable. You cannot... Sit in front of a, a sirloin steak and take it and just swallow it. Meat is meant to be 
chewed, is meant to be meditated on. Amen. <laughs> is it really meant to be swallowed, then thrown up again and swallowed? I know that's kind of gross, but that is how we meditate the word. David said in Psalms, I meditate his word day and night. There'll be sometimes God will speak to me in the midnight hour. It will be so profound that my carnal mind has to play catch up for several weeks to understand what God was trying to tell me. And that's the Holy Spirit's job, amen, to lead us and to guide us into all truth, to show us the, the, between the lines of his holy word, to reveal Christ to us. Amen. The whole world can pick up the King James Bible and read it, but that doesn't mean that they can look and peer into the mysteries of the church, the mysteries of salvation, the mysteries of the kingdom. I love this saying, and it is so true, God whispers his secrets but broadcasts his truth. You know, when Jesus was teaching in parables, it was for a reason. So that the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the people who did not believe him or have faith that he was the Messiah, they couldn't understand I mean, it was bypassing their carnal mind because it wasn't given to them. Because in their heart, they'd already rejected the truth of God's word. But the disciples, Jesus would say over and over and over again, but I've revealed these truths unto you, unto babes. Amen. And that's where we would get many are last um, in the kingdom. The last shall be first. Amen. Many are called, but few are chosen. What determines your level of understanding in the Word of God is your spiritual maturity. That is how much time you spend in His Word, spending time leaned against the breast of Christ. Amen. Hearing its heart. What is God's heart? What is God's heart? You know, I like this old saying. It says, the Word of God reveals the mind of God, but worship reveals the heart of God. I'll say that again. The Word of God reveals His mind, the way He thinks about the universe and about His creation and His plans. But when you worship the living Word, come on, you gain understanding into His thoughts, into His heart, into His soul, which is His mind, His will and emotions. Hallelujah. So it's important to understand, yes, milk is needed for survival for many Christians, but God is calling the body of Christ higher to a place where we can get over the milk. Come on, quit living off of the milk because you can't lift that kind of weight. Do the kingdom work that you need to do fully on a diet of milk. Amen. God wants you to be used mightily in his kingdom in the earth, and that only happens with a diet of meat. Amen. That's why Paul said, look at verse 12 of Hebrews 5, for when for the time you ought to be teachers by now, you have need that one should teach you again. Don't get mad at me. This is the word of God. Amen. This is not something I wrote. This is the words of Paul, the apostle, I believe in Hebrews 5 verse 12. But he said, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracle of God. So Paul's saying, look, you keep going back. You're still, he was talking to the Hebrew Christians. They were still in the back of their mind, many of them wondering if Jesus really was the Messiah. And Paul was saying, look, I've told you about he was crucified. I've shown you his, his, the prophecies in Isaiah and Malachi and Ezekiel. I've shown you that this is the one whom you seek. Yet you keep going back and allowing the devil to bring questions in your mind. He says, I can't teach you further until first you get this in your spirit that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And man, we've got to understand in order to go further in the things of God, we've got to leave the elementary ways. Some of you are still maybe watching, you're still questioning whether it's God's will to heal you. Or whether God really uses people in the gifts of the Spirit. Whether prophecy is for today. No, or tongues, whether they're still some around. Whether they have ceased or not. Until you get those fundamental truths solidified in your spirit, God will never teach you how to heal the sick. Come on, how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit if you're still questioning their validity. So that is the difference between the milk 
and the meat. Amen. The milk and the meat. Learning the difference. Discerning the difference. Amen. And I want you and I to become discerning Christians. Because when we're discerning, we suddenly will have a ministry. That means the word ministry means to serve. You can't serve other people when you yourself are still serving you. Amen. When, when everything's about you, it's hard to serve other people. To think outside of your world. And that's where, sadly, a lot of the modern-day church is. So I'm believing you who are watching are enduring this. You desire the sincere meat of the Word. Amen. Meat brings physical, spiritual strength. Hallelujah. And, you, and so Paul says, You have need that one teach you again. I'm in verse 12. Yet which be the first principles of the oracles of God. In other words, the very fundamentals of our doctrine. It's hard for you to go further and study eschatology and study the Old Testament and see Christ revealed in all of his facets and ways and, and, and dimensions if you're still learning about the fundamental truths. I mean, it's not wrong to be in that place, but it is God's desire for you, my friend, to go beyond. It's one thing to be taught something. It's another blessing to be able to take what you know and teach somebody else. That is God's will for you, to teach other people. Hallelujah. And until you can teach something, you don't really know it for yourself. That's the true test of how well you know something. Amen? Spiritually and physically. And so uh, Hebrews 5.12, we get down here, he says, And are become, some of you are become such as have need of the milk and not strong meat. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Amen. It is God's will. It is my prayer for you today to mature into the things of God, to become of strong, full age, as Paul the Apostle said. Again, don't get mad at me. This is the word of God. I didn't write it. I'm just relaying a message. Even those who by reason of use, this is verse 14 of Hebrews 5, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I'm telling you, God desires for you and I to live in a realm of discernment, of discerning of spirits, of being able to look into a situation, to discern what somebody else is going, to be like the high priest Jesus, come on, who was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, as Hebrews says. He was touched with the feelings of our weaknesses, our sins, our mistakes, our failures, our sicknesses, our diseases. Hebrews 4. Until you're touched and, and reach an age of spiritual maturity where you quit worrying about what you need and you begin to step outside of yourself, think outside of yourself, and you are touched with the feeling of other people. Amen. When you see somebody in need of food, you feed them. Hallelujah. It, when you are, are, are desiring to be used in the gifts of the Spirit and you see someone in need of a healing or a miracle, Hallelujah. You are the vessel God pours that through. Not a vessel to contain, but a vessel that you can be used by God to be a conduit. There's a difference. Amen. God wants to mature you to a place where you're not containing everything you've been taught, but suddenly the bottom breaks out and that vessel becomes a pipe, becomes a conduit, becomes a, a rushing river of life to not only bless you, but to bless all of those around you. My friend, that is the reason God God desires you to get off of the milk and get on a constant diet of the strong meat of the Word of God. Hallelujah. I've got a technical difficulty here. Amen. Are you being blessed tonight? My camera decided to go off. So say, I desire strong meat. Now, I'm not saying milk is bad. Milk is the fundamental truth of God's Word. I periodically, from time to time, go back and renew my mind with those things that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of the living God. He rose from the grave. And let me tell you, in, 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 in the Word of God, the most profound things are the most simple things. But I'm telling you, my friend, there is a place in God that you can go. No one can stop you. No one can tell you you cannot go to a certain level of understanding of spiritual discernment in the Word of God. 
Hallelujah. But there, I've got good news for you tonight. You can be anything in God that you desire to be. Hallelujah. But how do you get there? It's growing in your ability to consume strong meat. Amen. This is Hebrews chapter four, uh, 5, excuse me, verse 14. And so verse 6, we see, you remember, there's no chapter and verse in the Word of God originally. It was put there for our reference. Therefore, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, therefore leaving, all caps, interesting, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. What is the principles? Paul is not saying, look, this, these principles of the doctrine of Christ are not important. He says simply, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, moving on, amen, not questioning anymore the origin of the Messiah, not questioning anymore the prophecies of Jesus, not questioning anymore, is it God's will for you to be healed, to prosper financially? Is it God's will for me to have long life? Amen, we should already mature Christian, we should already be at the place where we know the will and the purpose of God, where we've studied his promises enough to know they're already, as Peter said, yes and amen. That's called leaving the doctrine, leaving, excuse me, the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Some of you, this is shocking. You haven't heard this kind of teaching before, but I'm telling you, it's right out of this King James Bible. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, and going on, he says, Therefore, leaving the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. I'm telling you, Christian, if that's not plain, I don't know what is. You know, so many times as, as baby Christians, and this is not wrong, but, but they spend more time repenting, more time asking for forgiveness, so much so that every time they get on their knees in prayer, it's, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repent. I'm sorry I did this and that and that. And that's what 1 John 1, 9 is for. Amen. This is not a, a sermon teaching message for the weak at heart. Or for the baby believer, this is for the mature Christian. Hallelujah. This is iron sharpening iron. This is removing raw material. Sometimes it's painful, yes. Being formed and molded by God, being the clay, it's painful. Pressure is applied. But if you will not resist the chastisement of the Lord, if you will not resist, by the way, the, the three uses of the word, exhortation, rebuke, instruction, and righteousness, that's the use of the word that uh, Timothy said. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. Profitable for rebuke, correction, instruction, and righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. Amen. And 1 Timothy 2.15. 1 Timothy 2.15. He instructs the believer to study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What does that mean? That means when you can look at having a steak in front of you on your dinner table and having a knife. You couldn't consume that snake, steak unless you put it into smaller pieces that, so that it would be more edible for you. Amen? Having discernment is the fork and the knife. Able to take the truths of the Word of God and put them in the right categories and, and consume them. Amen? To make it palpable. Because let me tell you something. I've seen so many baby Christians pastoring now for seven years. I've seen so many baby Christians fall into this trap. They become marvelously saved, born again, and they desire the sincere meat of the word before the milk. That too can be just as dangerous because what happens is they get choked. Hallelujah. They get choked. That's horrible. And then they stop serving God and they get discouraged and the devil takes them out. So the milk is not wicked or, or, or bad. The milk is good for a baby Christian. That's how they grow in their faith. But the meat is for a mature believer. That's why it's God's will for you from the words of Paul in Hebrews chapter 5, 12 to desire the strong meat of the word. I'll tell you what, many people need to hear what I'm teaching now. If you believe what I'm saying, say amen. Hallelujah. This is the word of the living God. This is not something that Pastor Christopher got in his room and, and typed up and wrote up on my own accord. I can't conjure this stuff up. This is the living, divinely inspired, inspired word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Divinely inspired. That's a mouthful. So going on, Hebrews 6, I'm almost done. Are you being blessed tonight? 
Hebrews 6, verse 1. So Paul says, they not laying again the foundation of repentance. Do you understand that? From dead works. What was happening is the Jews were going back and they were wondering, um, you know, is the blood of Christ enough? Paul said, stop it. Don't go back to the law of Moses. Don't go back to the law of condemnation. Amen. Then you just get into works. And Ephesians 2.9 says we're not saved by works. Lest any man should boast, it's a gift from God. Amen. We're saved by grace through faith. And so Paul says, don't go back to the early things. Stay in the meat. Stay in the principles of, of the word of God. Don't go back unto the, the original uh, principles of the doctrine of Christ. He says, therefore, leaving. Chew on that a while, my friend. Therefore, leaving. It doesn't mean that we leave the fundamental truths of our doctrine, that Jesus Christ died, was buried, rose again, is coming back for a glorious church, amen, that he gave gifts unto men, Ephesians 4. doesn't mean that we're, 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 we're saying, Paul's saying here, uh, leave those things, but you and I have to build upon those things, amen, allow the Holy Spirit to build truth upon truth, line upon line, precept upon precept, amen. The, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, that the, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. So it is God's will, his plan, his desire for you and I to not eat on yesterday's bread, but have fresh bread for a new day. That's why Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Come on, to, to, to move, to press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to when I first believed. I don't want to go back to the way that I first started out when I made Jesus my Lord. Amen. I've learned some things since then. What about you? I've gained some wisdom, some knowledge, some experience, and experience hope. Woo, hallelujah. Now I can stand stronger, help more people, preach uh, the doctrines of the Word of God in greater fluence, fluency because I've been through some stuff. I've had some experiences in life. You know, the, I used to sing that song by Andre Crouch, Take Me Back, Take Me Back to where I first believed. But, you know, I began to think when I matured, I don't want to go back to where I first believed. How many watching that are above the age of 14 want to go back to 14 years old? Hey, man, I'm 31. I've been there, done that. Don't want to go back to high school. Don't want to go through the struggles of college again. Hey, Amen. I am happy maturing in life and in Christ. And that is God's perfect will for you to go further beyond Amen, where you have been. And a lot of Christians, amen, they, they're so taught in the word. It's, it's a shame, but half of these teachers and preachers in the pulpit, they don't even know the 66 books of the Bible. They can't even recite to you chapter and verse. And that's a sad shame. That's what's happened, you know. These, these, these teachers, we've heaped them together having itching ears. Amen. Teach me the simple things. Well, it's time to go beyond the simple things and go into the depths and the riches. Romans eleven thirty three. 33, the knowledge of God. Amen. How unsearchable are, are his truths, his paths beyond finding out. That is God's will for you and I. There is no greater excitement than seeing the deeper truths of the word of God. Come alive. Amen. And study prophecy and the prophecy of the end times being fulfilled and the seven churches and revelations and the, 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 the revealing of the Antichrist and the, the seven years of tribulation and the, the two witnesses and the fire that they'll call down from heaven and, and the restitution of all things and the battle of Armageddon and the thousand year millennial reign of our Lord and the Lamb's book of life. It, it gets so much better. Come on, as you grow in Christ. Amen. If you want to go, you've got to grow. I said, if you want to go, You've got to grow. Yeah, so many Christians I've seen throughout my years in pastoring, they try to bite off more than they can chew. And that's another thing. Flip the coin. Remember, we got to stay in the middle of the road. It's good for a baby to live on milk. It's bad for an adult to live on milk. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's bad for a baby, an infant, to, to, to consume steak. It'll kill them. But it's good for you and I as adults to enjoy a hearty meal. And that's the same way it is with the word of God. Is this blessing your life? 
Thank you. It's good to see uh, several of you watching here. I see you on. God bless you. Thank you very much. I, I, it's good to see Miss Mariette. God bless you. And Miss Becky and Sarah and Virginia Workman. God bless you. And so, so many people, they're in churches today and they're, they're, they're disgruntled. They're unhappy. They feel like they, uh, their growth is spiritually, spiritual growth has been stunted because they feel they've grown more than their pastor. And you know what? Sadly, that is the truth. It is God's will for you on your own time to grow. Amen. You don't have to be in church every Sunday and Wednesday, and that's the only two days of the week you can grow spiritually. God, His Word is available for, for the seven plus billion people that fill the, universe, uh, fill the globe. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it is free and open for all. There is nobody stopping you from growing and going on in Christ. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Say, Lord, I want to grow so I can go and fulfill the Great Commission more effectively, more efficiently. Amen? A lot, of, a lot of times people don't understand. Here, I'll just keep on going. A lot of times people don't understand these principles. But you wouldn't hand a 12-year-old the keys to a Ferrari. Amen? you got to start with a bicycle, work your way up to a, to a beginner's car. Then you can drive $100,000 on wheels. <laughs> Amen? So it is a natural process, same, it's a spiritual process growing in Christ. With our, our Christian walk is a continual growing process. And by the, by the uh, excuse me, by the way, the time, the day that you ever stop learning and growing, you're dead. <laughs> you might as well just go on to heaven. Learning and growing is a part of the human experience. It's a part of being human. Amen. That's what gives life its meaning. That's what gives the birds and the trees and the flowers. They grow. They grow. They, they find purpose and growth. Amen. That is how God designed us to learn and to grow. It's good to see you watching tonight. So say, I desire the meat, the strong meat. Amen. I love that. Paul said in Hebrews 5.12, it's strong meat for the strong. You want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might? Consume some strong meat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love teaching. It is it's such a thrill for me to be able to teach you the word of God tonight. Are you being blessed? And so let's see. Why should I desire strong meat over milk? Let me tell you. Uh, he says here in uh, Hebrews 6, 1, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of faith toward God from dead works. Paul said, look, the Hebrew at church at that time, they were wanting to flee and move back from faith in Christ being uh, salvation alone, being had just through faith. To them, it was so weird. It was so um, different to them because they've been used to the blood and bulls of goats. They've been used to keeping the feast and the, the, the principles of the, the law of Moses. And Paul, the apostle, comes and he said, look, all you must do to be saved is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. That's all you got to do to be forgiven of your sins, to be washed in the blood. Amen. Don't go back to the fundamental truths of the law of Moses. By the way, the law of Moses was for a time and a season. But salvation opened to the world. And Paul is telling the Hebrew Christians in this day and time who were tempted to go back to Judaism. He said, don't do it. Stay justified by faith because the just shall live by faith faith. Amen. And verse two, I'm almost closing, almost closing. Here I am. <laughs> I'm a preacher. Okay. Of the doctrine of baptisms, he names some of these and of the laying on of hands. You're saying what? Just listen. And of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. Look, Paul is saying these are valid fundamental truths, but there's a higher dimension in God to go. These are the springboard, the launching pad of your Christian walk. Do you understand, my friend? Hallelujah. So these things are needed. 
For he says in verse 3, and this will we do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God, this is Hebrews 6, 5, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucify themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put him to open shame. What Paul is saying here, my friend, and I'm in Hebrews chapter 6. This is the King James Bible. He's simply saying, look, you would, it would be impossible for your salvation to be had in works. It's by grace are you saved through faith. Amen. It's not the blood of bulls and goats which can atone for your sin anymore, but the blood of the Lamb of God which was slain before the foundations of the earth. Jesus Christ, His blood was shed once on the cross of Calvary, and it's enough. Don't go back. Amen. What is the message tonight? Desire the strong meat of the word, not just the milk. Milk is good as a supplement. I mean, I like to have a glass of milk once in a while, but I don't have it for lunch and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Amen? God wants you to go further, deeper, faster than you've ever gone in his word and in his spirit. He wants to use you in a mighty way. Will you allow him tonight? Will you get to a place in your heart where you say, Lord, take me higher. My friend, all you have to do is ask. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. Well, I've had such a wonderful time teaching you the word of God. I hope that you've been blessed. Would you please like and share this broadcast? Help us get the word out. We're also on YouTube. Visit my YouTube channel, Christopher Lynn Ministries. And I know it'll be a blessing to your life. Check out our new material on YouTube. Excuse me. I am, I've just, we've just come out with a new CD uh, from The Secret Place. It's a DVD series. And it has an hour of teaching, and the episodes are faithed until you feel it, and discerning the will of God. And so we're going to send these out to all of our monthly partners, our supporters, and get that to you. We love you in the Lord. We are so blessed that you're watching with us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see my mom on here. Kirsten Conway's watching. Amy Hempfill. I hope I said that right. Hemphill. Maria Riley. God bless you, my friends. Amen. If you caught, didn't catch the first of this, I encourage you to go back and rewatch this video. There is inspirational teaching that will lift you up, encourage you, and grow you in your walk with Christ. Amen. There are too many people uh, clogging too many churches in holy huddles, not growing in their faith. Amen. You cannot grow and not go. Whenever you grow to a certain place, you suddenly discover your destiny. There is no stronger fire that will erupt in the spirit of a Christian than knowing who they are in Christ. I'll tell you what, I've got a fire in my belly tonight to encourage you, to teach you in the things of God, to encourage you to go further in your walk with the Lord Jesus. Well, I love you very much. Again, if you would like to sow a seed, I've left a link in the description below. Um, you can also text the number right there and just text the word give. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so just by texting. You can set up a monthly reoccurring donation there through Tithely, or you can visit us online at ChristopherLynn.org or ChristopherLynnMinistries.org, and you can click on the top menu, and, and it says Partnership, and we have a form that you can print out. We have an online form that you can fill out, and you can join your faith with us does not matter how little or how much it is faith that is involved amen and so if you'll sow a seed faith for your future for your ministry amen I've done that my whole life I've sown into many different ministries and I've seen fruit blossom in my ministry because I was faithful to sow and to the labors of other men and women. So if you'd like to become a part of our ministry, if it's blessed you, matured you, helped you in any way, I invite you to do so. Amen. Help us continue to do what we do, and we're going to continue to grow, and our ministry is going to blossom even more, and uh, I just am excited. I've ordered a whole new shipment of the book, The Nine Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Babe, would you give me a book really quick? Hallelujah. 
And um, I believe that it will change your life. Again, I uh, showed you a little clip at the beginning of this broadcast of God supernaturally healing by his mighty power someone with chronic lung disease, emphysema. And she began to breathe. For the first time, you could see the joy enter her eyes. I mean, I did. I was standing right face to face with her. And God healed her and even gave her a word. And uh, I didn't get to teach that really tonight. Um, I'm running out of time. But the gifts of the Spirit frequently, frequently will function together. Word of knowledge, gift of healing, prophecy, tongue and interpretation, the gift of faith, the working of miracles. Amen. These things, the discerning of spirits. The word discern, amen, means to see. And God wants you to see into the realm of spirits. And I'm going to begin to teach more on the gifts of the Spirit. But this is my book, The Nine Gifts of the Holy Spirit, God's expression of himself through you. It's a quick read. It's not very long. But in this book, I have packed so many stories, so many things from other ministries and men and women of God that will strengthen you, will encourage your faith, and show you that you are God's image. And the nine gifts of his spirit is God's expression of himself through you. Hallelujah. I have been so blessed to be with you today. And so you can order this on Amazon. Just type in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can go to our website, ChristopherLynn.org, and you can get the book there in our online store. And so I am so blessed. Remember, it is important to desire the strong meat of the word, to grow in your discernment, as Paul said in Hebrews 5 and 6. Chapter 5 and verse 6 is what we read, starting at chapter 5, verse 12. And going on to about the third verse of Hebrews chapter 6. Amen. I love you and the Lord. Remember, stay in the secret place because that's a place where God truly is. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Be incredibly blessed. I love you and the Lord.